Hey, good morning out there. And welcome and thanks for joining me today on this video. And just, uh, uh, well, the countdown continues, you might say. And so uh, we're uh, just going to show you a few things. If you're into gardening and stuff, um, I bought tomato plants. I bought a flat of these uh, Better Boys. And then uh, my son, he likes those uh, old habanero uh, peppers, the hot ones. He likes to put them in. They actually, just this is jalapeno. I, th I thought he was getting a habanero. Maybe he didn't see them, but he was with me, so he, he got a little plant there wanting me to plant. Last year, well, I always plant some hot peppers. But anyway, we got some um, those, a flat of those. And I usually plant three flats plus a few other little odd and end tomatoes. This is Rutgers. I love uh, Rutger tomatoes. I like to plant all uh, indeterminate, if you're wondering what kind, because I want them to produce all year. Those will produce uh, really a long while. Uh, they'll produce a good crop right at first, and then the tomatoes tend to get smaller, but I'll have tomatoes usually clear up to frost, and that's what we had this year. We don't have as many sometimes, but some years we've had wonderful success if the weather cooperates. But anyhow, these here, I'm doing in coffee cans, and I have cut the bottom off and just put the plastic lid on the bottom. There's a guy over here. I'm just trying this. So maybe you've tried it and you think it works great. We're just going to see. But I transplanted six of my Better Boy tomatoes over here into these little pots. And what this guy over here across the river tells me, that's his secret to success. And so uh, once they get really going good and it's time the frost is over, which is usually um, here at least by the 15th of April. I usually about April 6th, so we're getting the first uh, April here, so it's not very long that I'm going to have for these to be, uh, but I can baby them here. They get sunshine during the day. I know it's early in the morning here, and the uh, sun hasn't come up over the hill yet, but anyhow, um, I'm trying this, and what you do is when you plant these in the ground, you dig a hole, plant this can in the ground, and you take this bottom part of the lid off and he says that your cutworms won't bother your plants because they have to come and they won't crawl over this metal the cutworms won't i don't know if that's true or not but he says he's never lost one to cutworms and we have a little bit of cutworm problem here sometimes also he says the gophers won't bother them we have gophers want to come up, but he said they might eat some of the roots way down, but he said you want your roots to go down anyway, but putting them in this gives them a head start. I've also got four cans up here I planted squash seeds in. And a few years ago, I started some in uh, little Jiffy Cup containers and worked real well and got them it's really going big, and then I transplanted them. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I know you can buy them already going, but I'm going to do the same thing as the tomatoes. I've got the bottoms cut off of these coffee cans. We drink a lot of coffee, so we got to do something with our cans, and I keep the cans put back. So I thought, hey, uh, I'm just going to experiment, see if this guy knows what he's talking about. And I thought instead of just doing tomatoes, I would do two zucchini squashes and two yellow squashes, and we'll see what happens. But during this time we're in right now, why, you know, uh, we you should be doing what you can. If you've got downtime, extra time, we're not going to church right now. Although I tell you, on Sundays I rest. And this Sunday I really rested and I enjoyed myself. Uh, but anyway, this weekend we put up another Purple Martin house. I've got a video about Purple Martins. But uh, here's a bunch... Uh, here that's enjoying the old house and there is some that's enjoying the, the new house and they've already been bringing stuff in and building their nest in the new house is really neat and um, anyway we uh, uh, planted strawberries too I've got a video about this I'm just going to show you here uh, I've got a soaker hose on them we planted the bare root from Stark Brothers, I ordered just one bunch. I think it was 25 uh, plants you get in a bunch. 
and we set them out down through here just in a straight row i've done this before they come up real good the only difference is before i got them in the fall and I planted them in like August or September, they started greening up and coming up. And then they kind of go back sort of dormant. And then when spring come along, they were already growing like these that's in here. These were leftovers from last year that survived and they're blooming already. We'll have strawberries pretty soon. And these are June bearing, but for some reason here, we usually will by the middle to end of April, we'll usually have strawberries. Now, I don't know how this year we might not get any kind of harvest off of these because we planted so late. But I also like to put to stuff like this down. You don't have to do as much weeding if you put this landscape fabric through. But you can watch my video on that and see kind of how we're, uh, how we do this kind of stuff. And I, uh, my wife, uh, Josie, she's in, in, wanting to plant, uh, wanted to plant elderberries, so we ordered a couple of elderberry bushes. We didn't do a video on this, but there's uh, one of them. And I put this little cage around it because we got a dog back here, and I don't want him to tear them up. But <clears throat> these get kind of just a big bush. But they say elderberries are really good for you and uh, for your immune system and stuff. So. She wanted some elderberry bushes and she ordered them. And then uh, the other day at Tractor Supply, I purchased another plum tree. I've got two other plum trees here and uh, boy, they really make the plums. And I thought, well, dad, one more. We try to add uh, a little bit of something every year. And um, um, I wanted to say that some of you uh, have commented that you, don't, you can't do much at your place, like grow a garden. Uh, but you know I have seen people in, a, in apartments and stuff that are real creative in their uh, technique of gardening I, I go to sometimes do work at apartment complexes and uh, they'll have just a little patio area and they'll have a plant or two of tomatoes and in the summertime sometimes I'm awful tempted just to reach over there and pick one of them tomatoes you know and take it with me uh, because they look so delicious there but uh, they, they'll do it in their flower beds. A lot of the apartment complexes will actually let them plant stuff in the flower beds. You know, if you live somewhere where you uh, um, are like in town or something, you could be very creative with what you're growing. And, uh, you know, as of right now, there seem, seems to be not a real shortage of stuff, but a supply chain issue. And... Uh, so getting stuff here to our local store uh, a lot of stuff's out now we have things we put up food you know and we have beans and stuff like that and some of the stuff that's more of a luxury item i guess i would call it we are not as plentiful on some of those things but we're doing good we're we got to, we're able to eat but some of the like i like pita bread for instance now my wife's gonna have to learn how to make that uh, we like uh, tortilla shells, and uh, we've been using these low-carb tortilla shells, and um, we don't have them maybe once a week, you know, pita bread once a week, so uh, they've been sold out of that kind of stuff here, so it's really hard to get. So we have flour, and we have that masa or whatever it is that uh, Mexicans use to make their stuff with. We've got some of that in the freezer. We've got some supplies to make things, and so you may have to learn to make some things homemade. And right now, if you're not working, you got downtime, you got time to garden, you got time to learn to bake bread. You know, if you're learning to bake bread, uh, I haven't ever learned to bake bread, but I have seen my wife and other ladies and been around them and known what they've done. And when you first start baking bread, you have failures. And you also enhance your recipe and get better at it. So right now, hey, this is a great time. If you're at home and you're not having to work as much or you're not going to athletic games. You know, a lot of folks around here have got kids. They're going to ball games every night of the week. And then they got church a couple nights a week. Well, right now you don't have all that stuff. So you got plenty of time to get your act together because, um, you know, this kung flu thing that's going on right now 
is uh, a prolonged uh, deal. And uh, now we're up to another 30 days. So I'm calling this the countdown continues. But I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. I wanted to say something to you, too, uh, just as a heads up. Things are going to get better, folks. Things are going to get better. Uh, But it may get a little worse before it gets better. But one thing that... uh, we hated that we weren't able to go to church. Our church had to close down and uh, shut down for a while. And now we probably won't even be able to go for Easter services regularly. But what has amazed me is the churches are coming up with creative ways of getting together. And uh, so they put out videos. Uh, Pastors that normally aren't into video are putting out uh, like Facebook videos. Some are doing live feed uh, from the church and it may just be the pastor there or maybe the pastor and a song leader there whatever and they'll sing a few songs and the pastor will preach got to see one of my really good friends and I haven't got to see him or talk to him uh, personally in probably 10 years now but a real good friend of mine pastors a church up in Missouri and he put it on Facebook. He's not really done anything with this Facebook. He's my age, but he's kind of held off, and I feel like he's not really gotten with the times, but he was on Facebook, and I got a blessing getting to listen to him bring the Word of God, and I got to see his wife and some of them singing, and, uh, you know, they're just, they're still uh, practicing, you know, less than 10 people, doing all they can, and others that's doing this. There's a preacher that had his congregation show up and uh, preached uh, outside, and they all sat in their cars uh, listening. I mean, just a wonderful ways that people are doing things and families that are actually spending time together. Um, To me, sitting and watching video games and television isn't quality time. If that's what you do, bless your heart. But right now, a lot of folks are getting out, and they're able to go like on a hike, and they just stay away from other people. They go on nature hikes. They're going fishing. Uh, man, there is a lot of people fishing around here, lots of activities to do, um, lots of fun stuff to do. And people are uh, saying, you know, hey, I wanted to garden. I wanted to get me some chickens. There's people buying up uh, chickens uh, like crazy, people selling that have adult birds like myself, you can put them on Craigslist right now and just pretty much name your price. Uh, a person had told me they had a bunch of chickens and they had bought baby chicks from Atwoods that were getting feathered out last fall because Atwoods, uh, they kind of got a little too big and Atwoods wanted to get rid of them. So they offered to store uh, a dollar a piece for all the birds they had left, ducks, turkeys, chickens, everything they had there so they raised them up well someone come to her house the other day and i think it was thirty dollars something like that a, a hen she told them and uh they bought she had to cut them off because she said i've got to have you know uh half a dozen hens to supply my own egg needs but they would have bought every bird she had for whatever the price was it was seemed to me like really high price but um People are concerned. But anyway, I showed you my tomatoes at the starting of this video, and I'm telling a lot of stuff here. But I was going to tell you, you might go ahead and start, get your tomatoes bought. Get your stuff. You can, like I keep mine on the porch here. If it was to look like we were going to get down in really cold temps, I can bring them right in the house, and I'll set them on the washer and dryer for the nighttime. And uh, so I'm hesitant to put them out. I also went to the feed store to get uh, some salt for the cattle. And I went back to the seed shelf, and their seeds were uh, much lower than normal. They had a lot of seeds, but they didn't have as many as they usually do. But anyway, I I buy seeds in the fall, a few, and I thought I'm going to go ahead and buy, sure enough, fresh seeds right now. So that, because if I plant, it's more critical this year that we plant, and I feel like make things go. So I don't want to use old seeds. I want to use fresh ones. So I bought the seeds, and... uh, some fresh seeds and so i've got plenty of seeds right now i spent about 30 bucks on seeds but anyway you can order seeds in a lot of us ordering places are limiting or are sold out and so uh, i went ahead and got seeds but the young man that worked in there that waited on me he told me that that morning he said we had a big rush on garden seeds and he said we have been selling a lot of garden seeds and the reason for that is people are concerned about the food supply 
and what happens if the the states shut their borders down uh, you know here in Oklahoma right now if you come in from another state our governor has issued a uh, deal where you have to quarantine for 14 days. They, we don't want people coming in here from other states right now because of this disease. So they're trying to, to uh, quarantine folks uh, because people are leaving the big cities from other states and they're going and staying with relatives and stuff. Right here in our little community, um, we have lakes. We have uh, Ten Killer Lake, Greenleaf Lake, Kerr Lake, Eufaula Lake that are all right here. We, we're kind of in the middle where we live at of all these lakes and we're right on the Arkansas River and the Illinois River. The Illinois River here, the lower Illinois, is a trout stream and we have a big resort thing here that's a trout deal where they have cabins and stuff where there's still people coming there from all over and some of the community leaders are concerned because with those people coming are they going to be bringing in diseases here coming from other areas on the lakes here there's lots of lake homes people from texas and kansas and other places have weekend homes where they're coming here because their kids are out of school they're off work so they have this second home here that they're coming to and seeing things so we're very concerned in our little area about all these people coming so even though we not had a whole lot of cases, but we are having cases now. Our, we have a little community hospital that is just not much, and uh, uh, they do the best they can, but they're not equipped for anything big. So folks would have to go to another city, probably if they had the uh, plague, they'd have to go to another town. So anyway, when uh, we're concerned here, and we're trying to do as much as we can to stay self-isolated now it looks like till the end of april so i still have to go out and work every day we're using all kinds of precautions and things and uh, but we are doing uh, we are here a little bit more because we don't have events to go to so we're making the best of a bad situation we're doing all we can to garden all we can to uh, uh, grow things uh, uh, do some projects here that we've been putting off uh, you know uh, I have things I've bought up some paint and stuff over time like I've been painting on my house and stuff because uh, I got a little extra time and when I do have to go out and work I have a uh, we go to homes and usually there's not more than two people there and that keeps us under that threshold of 10 and under we're very careful we want people to stay back six foot we're doing trying to practice everything we've been told to and uh, I'm in the heating and air conditioning business and appliance repair, like refrigerators and freezers. And those are important things right now. We fixed uh, some freezers last week for folks. And a lot of them is like, you know, right now this is very important because what, what food we have, we don't want to lose it. I'm also trying to get my beef butchered. The beef place, I'm trying to get an appointment in, but they are overwhelmed. I haven't been able to even get through on the phone. When I do call, I get a voice message, message that says they're overwhelmed right now. Around here, everyone's got beefs because the beefs sold out at the store. So we're trying to get our beef in to get it butchered. It seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another. But today, I just say this is continuing the countdown and continuing on. But to think about things you can do, and also if you stay busy, this is something I've learned, if you'll stay active, stay busy, you get your mind off of some of the stuff. And if you let, if you stay on television, you stay on all this stuff that's going on, all these naysayers, or the news is really, uh, they're making use of a bad situation. I think they're overdoing it. And so in the process of just constant, constant, on ours is across the stream on our, our local television is constant uh, updates, constant updates of the, you know, everything that's going on bad, bad, bad. Well, if you let it, it could get you down. So it might be time to turn it off. Turn, we, they used to call it the boob tube. Turn the boob tube off. And I uh, don't know why they called it that, but anyway, turn that thing off and... Get outside, work in your yard if you got a yard. If you don't have a yard and you're at home, there's things you could do. Uh, there's sewing. There's uh, could learn to start prepping some items back. Now, don't go out crazy. Like that's what's caused the shortages. Everybody's going out crazy. Like there really wouldn't be a shortage, but people have gone out and panicked and they're buying 
uh, a whole bunch of stuff, and then they don't have nowhere to put it, and they're just doing some dumb stuff. But use common sense with what you got, and pray. And if there's ever a time we need to be praying, whatever, uh, you know, uh, there's all different flavors of Christianity. Whatever your flavor is, I think all of them believe in the power of prayer. And if there's ever been a time to pray and pray for our leaders, our president, our congressmen, senators, that they'll make the right decisions because those decisions are going to affect me and you. Hey, I've rambled on here enough. I'm going to go out here and feed the birds, feed the chickens, gather the eggs, um, and go from there. Hey, I appreciate you watching. God bless you. We're going to make it through this thing. With God's help, we can do all things. We're gone.